Today's video is going to be a little different than my typical videos because today I'm going to go into a little bit of depth on one nitty gritty detail that affects a project pretty significantly. And it's the kind of thing that a lot of people wouldn't notice. So I thought I'd go through that. And the reason I'm doing this is because I got a lot of great feedback on the poll that I put out recently for the drum carter I'm working in. But few people gave feedback like, oh, it has to be chain driven because uh, other drive systems slip or it has to be gear driven. So basically, I want to show why that's not necessarily true. I think that there's tiny little changes you can make to belt driven systems that make them a lot better. And I'll show one of those today. But I also want to say I'm not an evangelist of belt driven systems. I definitely will consider the pros and cons of gears and chains and all of those different drive systems. It's just those have cons and they have pros and I have to go through all of those and decide what's best for this particular system. That's why, you know, designing new products takes uh, months and months rather than, you know, just making a first prototype and having it work perfectly. I want to test out a bunch of different systems and figure out what works best. But anyways, for today, I'm going to be talking about the pulley that you use with a round belt. So here's the first pull test pulley that I made. And this is a U groove pulley. Over here is the second pulley that I made. And this is a V groove pulley. They look pretty similar, but there's a pretty big difference. So this one makes a V shape and kind of pinches the belt from both sides. And this one, the belt sits in the groove. And there's definitely pros and cons to each pulley. You don't want to use either one of these pulleys all the time. A lot of my e-spinners use a U-pulley because it was the best for those use cases. But for a drum carter, I would definitely use a V-pulley because it pinches and get, it pinches the belt as it goes around and it gives the most uh, torque to those kinds of systems. And you need a lot of torque with a drum carting system. So let me just show, to, show you how I set up the test system. So I had a little scale here like this, and it just measures how hard you're pulling. So the harder you pull, uh, the higher the number, and it records the number there. And then I attached a 200 gram weight to this end, put a belt in the middle, and I would just pull down on this and figure out about what the average tension was to make the belt slip in this particular pulley. And what I found was with this U-shaped pulley, it was about one kilogram of force to cause the belt to slip. Whereas with this V-shaped pulley, it was about four times as much, about four kilograms of force. So that's just one little change that you can make to a system that will greatly increase the amount of force before a, a belt starts slipping. And I just wanted to point out like there's, you know, dozens and dozens of these little decisions and experiments that you need to make before, or at least that I make before releasing a product. And I don't want people to think that, you know, I'm just jumping to one of the solutions. I'm definitely looking at the pros and cons of, you know, different gears and different drive systems for all of my products. Here's another view of the belts that I designed. These are on my computer screen. And you can see this is the U-shaped pulley and this is the V groove pulley. Now, another reason I ended up doing this is because I had seen that, you know, there was a big difference in the amount of torque you can apply before belt slippage on both of these pulleys. And I had also experimented with them in the past, but I had never actually measured anything. So I actually went out and bought that scale just so I could see for myself, like how big of a difference uh, there was between these. And I haven't optimized anything like the angle of this groove or played around with other things that you could do. And I'll probably go off and do that. But recording these videos slows down progress a lot. With 3D printers, I can really quickly just print out, you know, five different pulleys and figure out which one's the best for me and my specific use case. And that could be different depending on a lot of other factors. So I won't go through all of that here, but I did find it was really interesting to qualify, quantify for this particular test that I was doing. It was four times as much uh, force to make a pulley slip on this pulley as compared with that pulley. Hope you found this insight to my design interesting and thanks for watching.